Or do I need to okay. turn this on? Yeah. Um, you know, like you don't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Close you out go for That can be reflected. That can be reflected. No. I'd like to welcome everybody to the. Um, <laughs> right. Right, right, right. Is there anything here? No. Nope. Oh, oh. That's on. Yeah. That's on. That's on. Yes. Oh, turn it off. Mine's on anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Much better. <laughs> All right, we'll try this again. Um, my name is Mark Shaw. I'm one of the co-chairs of the um, New York City Advisory Commission on Property Tax Reform. I'd like to welcome everybody to the first public hearing here on Staten Island. Um, to begin with, I think we'll just start by all introducing ourselves, and I'll start on my left. With stuff. <laughs> You're far left, Mark. Far okay. Left. I'm Ray Majeski. I'm an ex, I'm an ex officio member from the New York City Council. Hi, Latanya McKinney, ex officio member, City Council. James Parrott. I'm with the uh, with the Center for New York City Affairs at the New School Commission member. Carol O'Claricon. My name is Vicki Bean. I'm one of the co-chairs, and I, whoops, sorry. I'm a uh, faculty member at NYU School of Law and faculty director of the Furman Center for Real Estate and Urban Policy. Hi, I'm Alan Capelli. I'm a Staten Islander. I'm a property owner here on Staten Island for over 30 years. <laughs> Good evening, Elizabeth Velez, Commission Member. Good evening, Gary Rodney, Commission Member. Uh, good evening, Jacques Gia, ex officio member, Commission of Finance. Good evening, Francesco Brindisi, ex officio member, representing the Director of the Office of Management and Budget. <laughs> representing the Director of the Office of Management and Budget. <laughs> All right, so since, since you get applause for saying something about good about Staten Island, I'm going to tell you that my first job in state government in 1981 was working for John Markey at the Senate Finance Committee. <laughs> uh, oh, one of the most wonderful elected officials ever to exist in the world. <laughs> we could use a few more of them these days. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody to the Advisory Commission on Property Tax Reform. This is our first public hearing. Um, I would just want to give a brief background that when Mayor de Blasio and City Council Speaker Corey Johnson established the Advisory Commission to develop specifically recommendations to make the property tax system simpler, clearer, and fear fairer, while ensuring that there's no reduction in revenue used to fund essential city services. The Commission is holding a series of public hearings this fall and next spring to hear, from, um, to hear from all people who pay property taxes directly or indirectly. Tonight is the first of these hearings here on Staten Island. Um, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be holding similar public hearings in the other four boroughs. Um, we decided to start on Staten Island out of our respect for Staten Island, because very often people on Staten Island feel that um, they, don't get, they don't get their level of respect from city government, and those of us that grew up working for people like John Markey recognize its importance, and um, we're, we're here to make, to make that point. Um, to ensure that commission hears from all those interested speakers, from, from all those interested, speakers should plan to speak for no more than three minutes. There's a clock in front that will start beeping after the end of your three minutes. We'll ask you to um, finish up. Commission members may use additional time to ask the speaker questions, however. Elected officials will be given the opportunity to speak first. All other participants will be heard in the order in which they sign up when they arrive at the hearing. The commission would appreciate comments on topics from three basic areas, the fairness and treatment of different kinds of properties on, uh, uh, with the property tax, what kind of improvements we could make in the administration of the system, and what kind of um, 
how, how can we best avoid significant property tax increases that happen to people's properties through transitional or income-based mechanisms in addition to the basic property tax? The Commission looks forward to all the, those interested in improving the property tax system. This is the beginning of a series of public hearings so that we can better educate ourselves about the issues that various residents in New York feel about the property tax so that we can then have deliberations to make some recommendations as to how to make the system a fairer system. We all recognize that the property tax um, is always controversial. People don't like paying taxes in general. The property tax is incredibly complicated and that gets people even more pissed off. But the truth of the matter is it's the most significant source of revenue for New York City's budget. And because of that, it's one of the most important parts of the city's budget. And it provides about half of the tax revenues in the entire city of New York. And in order for us to deliver the services that people want and demand, we need to find a way to have a stable property tax system. And the plan is to review the system because everybody and their mother agrees that it is um, inequitable in the way it currently works and our desire is to figure out a way after hearing from you to figure out a way to re make recommendations um, to both city government and the state government to ensure a fair, fairer um, property tax system <coughs> going forward. Um, so with that I'm going to turn it over to my co-chair um, who will start to in introduce this first speakers. So l let me also just um, remind everybody that if you haven't filled out one of the little um, slips saying that you want to testify, you should um, do that at, at the, uh, in the entry to the, to the uh, auditorium. Uh, also, I wanted to um, just you know, remind everyone that we want to hear from you. Um, you can also submit any testimony online at any time over the next few weeks while we're holding uh, public hearings. So we will, um, you have a clock that will uh, ring at three minutes and we will try to uh, help you wrap up at that time. We're going to start with our uh, first witness, uh, Assemblywoman uh, Nicole Maliotakis. I'm delighted to have you. Good evening. I want to thank you all for coming to Staten Island to discuss an issue that is very important, not only to this borough, but uh, the other four boroughs as well, and that is the issue of property taxes. Um, it sends the wrong message when the mayor of the city of New York has a home that's worth $1.7 million and pays roughly $3,500 in property taxes, and yet somebody here on Staten Island or in other parts of, of the boroughs has a home worth $560,000 and is paying $2,000 more than he is. And that is what this is all about. This is a real tale of two cities and one that must be rectified so that it is fair, it is equitable, and it is affordable for all. Last year, class one homeowners in Staten Island South Shore collectively paid roughly three times the amount. $226 million than those in Park Slope, Brooklyn, $81.4 million. Despite the fact that both these council districts have a collective combined market value of homes um, with a value of $24 billion. So $24 billion in combined value in one district, $24 billion in a combined value in another, yet one district is paying $226 million in combined property taxes and another is only paying $81.4 million. Staten Island's Mid-Island District, where the combined market value is roughly $22 billion, Class 1 homeowners pay $202 million, and homeowners on Staten Island's North Shore still collectively paid property taxes combined $110 million, despite the collective market value of those homes being half of what it is in, in de Blasio's uh, district. In the council district representing Bay Ridge and Diker Heights and Bensonhurst, in which my district also overlaps, the combined market value of class one properties is 19.5 billion and homeowners paid 137 million in property taxes, still well above what the homeowners are paying in downtown uh, Brooklyn. 
Now, the same goes for communities across our city. We're limited on time, so I'll mention just a few. The Rockaways, Breezy Point, Howard Beach, Jamaica, Cambria Heights, St. Albans, Queens Village, Elmhurst, Jackson Heights, Glendale and Queens, in, in, in the Bronx, Castle Hill, Hunts Point, Throgs Neck, Longwood, uh, Morris Park, Pelham, Brooklyn, Canarsie, Brownsville, as I mentioned, Bay Ridge, Flatbush, Sheepshead, Bay, Bergen Beach. I have the whole list in my testimony, and it's actually more than what I've listed in my testimony. But in just naming a few of the neighborhoods that pay double or triple the effective tax rate that our mayor and his neighbors pay, these low and middle income neighborhoods are <laughs> subsidizing the property taxes for more expensive and affluent neighborhoods in our city, and that is wrong. This is because under the current system, Staten Island and portions of the Bronx pay the city's highest effective tax rate of 1.02%, 1.03%, and 1.05%, followed by low and middle income parts of Queens and Brooklyn, as I mentioned. Um, and for example, in Queens, Bayside and Douglaston pay an effective tax rate of 0.94%, Breezy Point and Rockaways, Hollis and Jamaica, 0.93%. In Brooklyn, Bay Ridge, 0.73% effective tax rate, but yet in Park Slope, in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn Heights, and parts of Manhattan, the most expensive, the trendiest, and uh, the most sought after neighborhoods, they, they are paying roughly 3.32%, a third of what we're paying here on Staten Island. So I just want to propose my three changes. I know I've run out of time, but just to, that's really why I'm here, just to give you suggestions. Um, but I needed to propose those facts to back up what I was, my arguments are. <clears throat> All class one property should be assessed at full market value by removing the amount of which property assessments can increase so that the trendiest neighborhoods are not safeguarded from paying the same property tax rate as the rest of the city. If the highest effective tax rate paid in the city is, let's say, 1.05, which it is currently, and the lowest is 0.32%, which it is currently, you know, the uniform rate should really be somewhere in the middle, and that would be fair. Secondly, the city should consider providing a property tax cap for seniors who are 65 and older, whose household incomes do not exceed a set amount. I say 75000 commission may want to set another amount, and have lived in their homes for at least 20 years or so. Um, and this is primarily to protect those senior citizens who are in those hot neighborhoods, as I've mentioned before, downtown Brooklyn, Manhattan, because they may see overall that their property taxes are increasing in those areas, but to protect those who bought their homes a long time ago, we don't want to price those seniors out. That's what we're seeing here on Staten Island, and we don't want to see that happening in those neighborhoods. Um, we want to make sure that they can afford it. So maybe in that case, property taxes would be capped based on a designated percentage of the in individual's income to prevent senior citizens from being forced to sell due to inability to pay their annual bill. Lastly, New York City should be subjected to the 2% cap that nearly every other municipality in the state abides by. Okay? We're one of the few that are not under that regulation of a 2% cap. The New York City Council has increased the property tax levy, which is the amount of money they seek from all of us property taxpayers, by 44% over the last five years alone. So we need a 2% cap because that, I believe, is the number one reason why we've seen all our bills rapidly increase. And so I thank you all. Um, and, and by the way, that could be done directly. Just the city council has that vote every single year. It doesn't need to go to the state legislature. I thank Mayor de Blasio for hearing our pleas, forming this committee. I thank all of you for your time and attention uh, to this very important issue. I hope that our voices are heard and that w the suggestions that I'm making will be implemented in your recommendations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker will be uh, Councilwoman Debbie Rose. Good evening. It's good to see you guys here on Staten Island, and um, I'm glad to see that we're the first, since we will probably be the most vocal and the most angry. So I want to say good evening, and thank you for being here this evening to hear our, my constituents and I. I also want to thank Mayor de Blasio and Speaker Corey Johnson for empaneling this commission. As a member of the budget negotiating team, my colleagues and I fought during budget negotiations this spring for a property tax rebate. 
Though we were not successful, my hope is that this commission will do something even more meaningful for homeowners. And this is to propose a permanent fix to our current opaque, regressive system that penalizes Staten Island owner, homeowners while rewarding speculative buyers who flip properties in wealthy areas of the city. My North Shore um, Council District ranks sixth out of the city's 51 districts in terms of effective property tax rates, with homeowners here paying an average of 1.1% of their home's value, significantly higher than the city median. In the western portion of the district where I live, the inequality is even more extreme, with homeowners paying as much as 1.2% of their home's value. Compare that to the effective tax rates of 0.2% in areas such as Carroll Gardens in Brooklyn. It is clear to all that our system burdens property owners in neighborhoods that appreciate at a slower pace while rewarding those in the most affluent neighborhoods. One of the reasons I pursued public office was to make our city more fair for all New Yorkers. When it comes to property taxes, we have a system that is anything but fair. Hardworking homeowners with long-standing roots in their communities should not be paying a greater share of their property's value or a larger dollar amount than a real estate company flipping multi-million dollar units in Brooklyn and Manhattan. This system has been documented to be regressive with low and middle income property owners with modest homes here on Staten Island paying several times what a wealthy homeowner pays. Although homeowners are encouraged to appeal assessment decisions through the tax commission, few of them understand the original basis for a property assessment increase. This property, these property owners have difficulty presenting a reasonable argument for a reduction in the assessment. Even when they do understand, they do not have the information on comparable properties in their neighborhood, much less throughout the city, that could give them weight to request um, a reduction in their property assessment. The assessment leads to taxes demanded, and the working families in my district have nothing in their toolbox to fight City Hall. We must look at our appeal processes as well as our beginning assessment methods to develop a clear and balanced means for property tax valuation. I know that myriad solutions to this system have been proposed, issuing rebates, lifting assessment caps, instituting a flip tax, all are worthy considerations that will help to fix a convoluted system that few people in this city understand. I hope that we will look at each and every one of these options and bring to us real reform that creates a fair system and, and ends discrimination against Staten Islanders and against lower and middle class property owners. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, we're next going to hear from Robert Burkhead, who is a representative of Congressman Donovan. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Congressman sends his regrets. He's stuck in Washington, uh, hopefully till tomorrow. He may even get held till over the weekend. So I'm just going to read a quick statement. Thank you to the New York City Advisory Commission on Property Tax Reform for the opportunity to offer testimony on this important issue to all Staten Islanders. The unfair property tax situation burdening Staten Island homeowners once again evokes a familiar phrase, the forgotten borough. While City Hall claims to be for a fairer tax system, Staten Island seems to be the exception to that rule. Our borough is a middle class stronghold, yet New York City taxes its wealthiest citizens at a lower effective property rate. Studies have shown that Staten Island homeowners face higher effective tax rates compared to other boroughs. Enough with the lip service. We need to deliver tangible results that alleviate this burden through remedies such as enhanced tax exemptions for our seniors, veterans, and hardworking families. Level the playing field for Staten Island by reigning in the city's wealthiest neighborhoods so that they pay a fairer rate. Mr. Mayor, I ask that you join the fight for Staten Island's beleaguered middle class and reform the city's property tax system to make it more equitable for them. 
Please reassure Staten Islanders that New York City is composed of five boroughs, no fewer. Thank you for this opportunity, Congressman Donovan. Thank you. Um, we'll hear from David Carr, who is a representative of uh, Councilmember uh, Mateo. Thank you, David. Thank you. I'd like to thank the New York City Advisory Commission on Property Tax Reform for the opportunity to offer my testimony at tonight's public meeting and to welcome you all to Staten Island. While I know you understand it, the fact is Staten Island is different in many ways from the rest of the city. We are a borough of home ownership, and my constituents continue to be chased away from the city they love because of the rapidly increasing cost of living, including property taxes, which creep up year after year. As a city made up of five boroughs, it is so important to have someone who understands our community on such an important commission. To Mr. Capelli, you have an important responsibility to represent the interests of half a million Staten Islanders that often differ from those of the other four boroughs. I know it will not be an easy task, but it was vitally important, and even more so when you consider from the outset that the mayor has indicated that this commission's mission is to rationalize the tax code, not necessarily to bring tax relief. While the former is a worthy goal, it cannot be separated from the issue of equity that forms the basis of the relief we're seeking for Staten Islanders. Mr. Capelli, I'm prepared to assist you in any way. Far too often throughout our history, we have often been left out when decisions affecting our future are made. And make no mistake, the decisions of this commission have the potential to pose an existential threat to the Staten Island community. If decisions are made that will increase property taxes, it will make our borough even more affordable and hasten the exodus of Staten Islanders from our borough city and state. The truism on Staten Island is that all of, our, all of our residents came here from Brooklyn and within two generations many began leaving for New Jersey. For a long time the hesitation for that move was based on the fact that the tax burdens in the Garden State were much higher compared to New York's. Unfortunately that gap is narrowing more and more by day as property taxes continue to rise. Many re Staten Islanders recently received notifications from their mortgage servicers about shortages in their escrow accounts because of increasing tax rates. They therefore feel the effects of property taxes each and every time they make a mortgage payment. The stakes are high. If property taxes continue to rise, Staten Islanders will be forced to leave in even greater numbers. The City Council's Republican delegation has historically opposed uh, efforts to tax Class 1 and Class 2 homeowners by voting no on the class share equalization rates that shifts more of a burden onto one and two family homes. This complicated and convoluted system is part of the reason for the continuous upward creep in property taxes, with the other being the assessment cap. That means property assessments often continue to rise even when the actual value of a property has stagnated. I have joined with my colleague, Councilmember Borelli, along with the bar president in calling for a property tax cap reset. We all know the cap on annual increases has been a double-edged sword. While it's supposed to keep our bills under control, it has also shielded the neighborhoods whose values have increased the most from higher tax bills, even as these same properties are turned over and over again by speculators and bought by individuals who are not New York City residents. That is why allowing the cap to reset upon sale is a good way to bring equity within the tax class shares over the long term. So I thank you for this opportunity to submit this testimony, and I ask you to ensure that Staten Islanders pay a lower share of their property taxes moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Donald DeRosa, who is a representative of the New York City Comptroller, Scott Stringer. Good evening to the commission and to my fellow Staten Islanders. My name is Donald DeRosa and I am the Staten Island Borough Director for New York City Comptroller Scott Stringer. I am here in my official capacity as his Borough Director as well as a born and raised Staten Islander who still lives here. Both myself and the Comptroller are very well aware of the burdens that Staten Island homeowners face when it comes to our property taxes both on this borough and across the city and he is committed to doing everything he can in his capacity as well as in my capacity to assist this commission and to advocate on behalf of Staten Island. Just a couple of weeks ago, the Comptroller released a report uh, that detailed the alarming disparity in how property tax burdens have grown for working families, and I'm just going to read a couple of sentences from the introduction of that report. The new analysis found that over the last decade, taxes have increased at triple the rate of incomes, making it nearly twice as hard to pay for these taxes for households with incomes less than $100,000. The report additionally highlights the ineffectiveness of current property tax relief programs, 
which are narrowly funded, highly restrictive, and fail to support struggling New York City homeowners. To ease the burden, Comptroller Stringer is recommending the New York City Property Tax Commission mm -hmm. explore models for adding these disparities, for addressing these disparities, and making our property tax system fair for all New Yorkers. The report includes a number of suggestions, which include increasing the number of New Yorkers eligible for tax relief programs, expanding benefits, and exploring deferment programs. The Comptroller looks forward to a continued open and transparent dialogue with the Commission with the hopes that the Commission continues to hold open hearings across our city to ensure that all Staten Islanders and New Yorkers are heard and we establish long overdue relief for hardworking homeowners. I thank the Commission for coming to Staten Island. Both myself and the Comptroller do hope that the Commission continues to hold open hearings across Staten Island to make sure that this borough's voices are heard, um, something that is long overdue. Thank you. Thank you. We have the Comptroller's report and we appreciate your testimony. Uh, I'm going to um, now call uh, Anthony Reinhardt, who is a representative of Senator Lanza's office. But um, we will now also um, start to hear in order of uh, people's sign up. So if Mary Ann Rothman and Alana Imperato and Albert Reluccio, if I apologize for my terrible pronunciation of all names. Um, so if they can come to this table um, and so we can start um, hearing from both sides of the room here. So, um, uh, Mr. Reinhardt, thank you. Good evening, my name is Anthony Reinhardt. I am here on behalf of State Senator Andrew Lanza. Tonight, Senator Lanza wants to ensure that our community residents are the focus of the comments and therefore the comment from Senator Lanza is brief. Senator Lanza states, respectfully, I submit that this tax study is a sham. We do not need an advisory commission to tell us the problem. We already know what it is and it is that our property taxes are too high. So Senator Lanza's message to New York City is to lower our property taxes now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Rothman and, uh, and uh, Ms. Imperato and, and Mr. Reluccio, and then at this table, if we could have uh, Natalie Gawita, Goetta, I apologize again, and uh, Joe Ni uh, Nigro. Ms. Rothman, thank you. Good evening, members of the commission, uh, and thank you for holding this hearing, and I don't think you're a scam. Um, my name's Mary Ann Rothman. I'm the executive director of the Council of New York Cooperatives and Condominiums, which provides information, education, and advocacy for housing cooperatives and condominiums throughout the city and beyond. Several of our members are represented here tonight. In 1990, the or our organization formed the Action Committee for Reasonable Real Estate Taxes, which I maintain is not an oxymoron. We want, uh, we've been working since 1990 for a property tax system that would deal fairly and equitably with all New York City taxpayers and that would be easy to understand. Yes, a challenging goal, but we're optimistic that your recommendations will help get us there. We believe that this requires a complete overhaul of our present stru tax structure, no further tinkering of the present convoluted system can be effective. The top priority for our organization is to have equal treatment of all forms of home ownership. All residential property should be assessed in a uniform way and subject, subject to the same tax rates. Mitigating overlays should then reduce these taxes for homes that are occupied by their owners as their primary residences and for owners meeting other qualifications, people with disabilities, seniors, veterans, those meeting income qualifications, and anything that I may have forgotten. These reductions would disappear, of course, when the resident left the home or otherwise no longer met the qualifications. I would also suggest that changes be phased in so as not to be too burdensome. Thank you. Can I ask uh, Ms. Rothman, um, can you give us a flavor about the, the issue of co-ops and condos versus single-family homes in Staten Island? We hear a lot about it elsewhere. 
in the in the city, but or are your members going to talk uh, about that? There aren't all that many co-ops and condos on Staten mm, Island, right. uh, but they, like the homes on Staten Island, are assessed at uh, challenging levels uh, as compared to um, co-ops and condos of roughly comparable value in other boroughs. Mm -hmm. um, I okay, that's that's helpful. Any other questions? Just thank you very much, Ms. Ruthman. Thank you. We appreciate your coming. Um, Ms. Imperato and and Mr. Reluccio. Yeah, that's fine. Apologies. Oh, you can tell us the correct pronunciation, and then I will work on that, okay? Yes. Uh, my name is Albert Relucio. I'm the board president of 1160 Richmond Owners uh, Cooperative. Um, I just want to say a quick word, then, really, I want uh, Elena, who's the building manager, to really go over some of the uh, unbelievable numbers that have gone uh, through us since 2011. Um, basically, we're, we're looking for an explanation, uh, someone to tell us definitively why we're having these disparative types of, of increases to the other boroughs. Um, property mar market values being the same, the taxes are not the same. Uh, I just, that's all I really want to say, and uh, I, I have to cut myself up because I'm not that polite sometimes. Um, so Elena will just give you a few numbers since we have very little time, and she could also uh, go through the differences between the class ones and our cooperative uh, taxes. Thank you. So in, 2000, in 2007, our taxes were 86,559,000. ,000. As of today, our taxes are $300,286. They have gone up $213,727 in 11 years. And in the past, from 2014 to 2018, they've gone up $145,519. And within the last three years, it's $100,000. They've gone up. There's no one can answer any of our questions. We've been everywhere. I've been to the tax department. I've been to Steve Matteo's office. Um, I reached out to Nicole's office the other day. It's, it's just unbelievable. No one can, and when, I, when you go down to the tax department, they can't, even ask, they can't even answer you what the adjustments that were made on your tax bill because the co-ops have co-op abatements, and if someone's not a primary residence, it's taken away from them. But I don't know who to even put that towards to tell me that they owe me that money, the $600 or the $300. And we've been going back and forth since January on this. Um, I'm the Commissioner of Finance. Can I see you after the meeting? Sure. And I could take your information and go back to my <coughs> folks and review it and get back to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Thank you for your time. And let me, let me just ask, just to clarify, you've seen a $100,000 increase over the past three years, which is a lot, given mm -hmm. the value of your... Is this all because of changes in the assessment, or is it about this coming and going of abatements and credits? It has nothing to do... That has nothing to do with the abatements and credits. This is purely, this is purely the way in which the assessment has evolved over yes. the past... And our, and our market value has only gone up Six thousand, six hundred thousand. As I said, we will leave you. You know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I should say thank you very much. And I should say that um, the Department of Finance has folks out in the lobby. Um, if people have particular questions or or problems with their particular property taxes, other than the system and. And, and the general rates, there are folks out there who can um, try to help you tonight, okay? Um, okay, so thank you uh, very much. And, and I just want to also note that we've been joined by another commission member, um, Ken Knuckles, on the far left. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, and I, I just want to, we're going to hear from um, Ms. Gowada and Mr. Nigro, and then if we can hear from Joseph uh, Sicilanio. Thank you. Sorry. And um, Carl uh, Pastiza. Um, Ms. Gawede. She, she mm. wanted me to go first. Is that all right? I'm sorry. Oh, perfect. Not Joe Nigro? Mr. Nigro. Thank okay. you. I recently purchased a home. The, the woman right next door to me, the only difference, it's 26 by 100. My property is 25 by 100. And I'm paying about $1,800 more in taxes. 
right? I had a property on the other side of Staten Island, the people that live here, Clover and Delafield, it was a mixed use property. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna give you, I sold it about a year and a half, two years ago. The city had it up for 171,000. They said that was the value. I was lucky to get 87.5. I wanna tell you the history. I did research, I sent letters, I did, and every time they got it down a little bit, the next year they waxed it even more. They come back. I, in 07, the house went up $3,200. In 08, not the house, the value of the land, excuse me, vacant, mixed use. Uh, with a street widening, about a, a quarter of the property, which devalues the land. You can't build in the street widening. And went up in 07, 3,200. In 08, it went up 28,000. In 09, it went up 42,000. This is during the market, pretty much was tanking, all right? And, Oh, 942,000. And 10 and one up 32.4. I complained about it. I says, how's this possible? The whole country's in a, in a, in a bad way with the real estate. They sent me another letter and made it zero raise. My bill went up $200. I called up. She says they changed the calculation formula. In 11, it went up $40,320. This was vacant land, mixed use, try to build on it. Everything you wanted to do, you couldn't do. Commercial wasn't good there. You couldn't rent it, and they wouldn't let me put residential, and the taxes went up to like 7,200. I, I had to get rid of it. And now, 171, I got 87.5. Something's wrong. I told the city, give me 150, go make 20. I said, you'll never get that. Couldn't even get 87.5, and I was lucky to get that. I was getting off as a 60, 70, but after a while, you start paying 7,000 a year. In between, I, you should have got 100, a minimum, but it don't pay. You, you, you know, 87.5, you go pay another year or two, that's $14,000, over 14,000 in taxes. I had research, I wrote them letters, I had national real estate research on a mar what was happening in the whole country, in the city, <clears throat> I got nothing. Couldn't get no answers. I went down there, I talked to, to a guy, had an appointment, I went down there, I got comps on other pro not exactly, because I had a street widening, which devalues, I had a comps on other property with a building, their taxes were lower. His answer to me was, well, if somebody buys it and they want to build on it, it costs them money to knock it down and rebuild. I said, that's true, but it doesn't devalue the land. You got a structure with income on it, this is vacant. So you, you talk to them, you could talk to the, to the wall. That's how I found that. Thank you, Mr. Negro. Um, may I ask just one question, if Please. you don't mind? Sure. Um, when you were talking to people, when you say you were talking to people, were you talking to the Department of Finance? Or the tax, I, I you appealed went to the it. tax commission? I went down to the city, right, in, yeah. uh, was it Center Street? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I sat down with someone, you know, my daughter's good. She was actually a math. She did all kind of th things. She did with the land, with the vacant land, this, that, because they said it's vacant. It wasn't even close if you did it that way. We don't do it that way, he tells me. Okay, so I says, here's properties with a structure. One of them was way bigger than that, with no street widening. It was less than that. I says, you don't even make sense what you're telling me. I says, you're telling me a, a property with a structure is worth less money than, than mine. If I, the guy I want to sell it, he's going to get more. Then he hit me with, the, if somebody wants to knock it down and rebuild, it's gonna cost them money to knock it down. I said, what does that have to do with the value of the property? So, I mean, to me, that was a weak argument. Thank you. Right. So, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Nagel. Yes. I'm, I'm confused. Did you, did you challenge an appeal, or did you, do, you talk to with somebody? No, I challenged an appeal. Okay. And then when it went down, the following year, you got raised that and more. I see. In other words, it's almost like you saved a little bit one year, and then the next year they, they went up. Like those, those figures I gave you, if you go check, the, the whole country was in a tank. Yes. I said, how's this vacant land on Cloven Delafield and the person that lives here, there's four corners that have commercial. It's an older section with the old houses. They're not that, the value is not that high. And it's not prime commercial. I says, how is this com mixed use in this area going up so high? I says, Buy it for me. Go ahead. You can make money. I told the city, take it. Okay. Thank you. And very I got 87.5. They had it at 171. That's a pretty big difference. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate hearing your story.
Good Ms. evening. Th thank you for coming out to Staten Island. I have three things uh, very quickly. Um, I'm a Hurricane Sandy rebuild, and it remains a challenge. Um, every year, a 6% increase is not even commensurate with my annual salary increase. Mm -hmm. um, I would really appreciate it if the commission could look into um, some manner of rectifying that um, disproportionate increase for a very hardworking woman. I go to work every day, I pay that toll every day, and this is not a quality of life. I moved to Staten Island 20 years ago from Brooklyn because I wanted to raise a family in the country. Okay, I'm here, but I'm paying city prices. And as a working class citizen, I feel like um, on the back of my hard work, I'm subsidizing Park Avenue, and it's just not right. It needs to be rectified. Secondly, um, the whole challenge process is beyond me. I work for a law office for 35 years, and I cannot figure it out. There has to be a better way. And I'm better than most, trust me. Mm -hmm. For the average person, they can't figure this out. So I employ you on that. And lastly, um, with regard to the public hearings, mm -hmm. most people that would want to be here tonight are still commuting. 6.30 in the evening is not late enough for us poor working slobs. We're, we're doing the commute. Okay. We're roughing it. Two hours a day, two and a half hours a day. Uh, we're, we're on the public transportation system. So I implore you that when you come out to these meetings that you give us time to get here. 6.30 is not, is not good enough. Okay. And that's it, thank you. Okay, thank you for... <clears throat> Thank you for your testimony, and, and thank you also. Um, it is very difficult to schedule for everyone, but I really appreciate your, your comments, and we'll try to um, take that into account when we hold the second set of hearings, and certainly when we hold the hearings um, you know, throughout the city. Um, Mr. Uh, Cecile, Cecile, thank you. I <laughs> don't. Thank you for hearing me tonight. Um, I just got a couple of concerns. I live in a development, all right? I'm also on the board of directors too, the vice president. What I can understand is I get no services from the city of New York. I live in a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. They don't remove my snow. They only pick up my garbage. I pay for the street. We take care of the street, the, the, the catch basins, the sewers, the lights, maintenance. We take care of everything. The city does not give me one inch of service, just removing of the garbage for the homeowners which we have to have insurance for you guys to come in here to take, take it away. Mm -hmm. Why is it my taxes are up to $10,200? I called last year the tax department, and I says, why is it that my taxes are going up like this? Oh, well, you know, let me tell you, this is the, this is the lady says to me, let me tell you, if, uh, you know, if we come out there, we're gonna reassess your property, and you, most likely your taxes are gonna go up. Guess what? My tax was 9,500. They came out. I caught the guy in my back of my fence with a camera, with a, going like this. Is what are you guy? What are you doing? I, I went around the other side. Guess what? At the end of the year, they raised me up 700 dollars. I get no service from the city whatsoever. So you explain to me. There's 37 houses in this cul-de-sac. You guys can't get it straight. I'm paying 10 too. My friend Antonio is paying 11,200. A guy across, right, same exact house across from me is paying 8200 8, When I call up to complain about it, they keep raising my taxes. That's why I was neglected to say something tonight, because maybe, maybe you guys are going to you know, get my property reassessed again. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's, it's, getting, it's getting ridiculous now. I mean, I understand that, you know, we live on Staten Island. I understand the mayor has a lot of headaches. He's got to pay for everything, which is fine. But you know something? Like the lady, young lady said over there, take it, from, take it from his neighborhood, not from our neighborhood. He's paying $4,300 a year. I'm paying over $10,000. Why is that? And I get no services from the city. And every time I complain about it, okay, they come and they raise my taxes. 
So please explain to me what is, what's going on here. I can't get a straight answer. Okay. Go ahead. What's the approximate value of your property? 849. Okay, thank you. Okay, and de Blasio's house is 1.5 million. He's paying $4,000 and I'm paying over 10 grand a year. I mean, come on, seriously. Now what's gonna happen? I gotta go home, at the end of the year, I'm gonna get another tax raise because I opened my mouth again. I mean, somebody's gotta say something. And I'm not the only one. I, like I said, I live, at, I live in a cul-de-sac with 37 homes. And everybody's frustrated. And like the young lady said, everybody's still working at 6.30. They don't get home until 8, 8.30. Mm -hmm. They would love to be here. So, I mean, I don't know what to say. You tell me, what am I supposed to do? In another five years from now, I would have to tell them, turn around and sell my house and move somewhere else because I can't afford the taxes. My bank already told me already, my, my mortgage company said, listen, you're being assessed. We're going to be raising your taxes again next year. I said, how can it be? We got a heads up. I don't know. So, I mean, I don't know what to say anymore. So, I, we need some type of help on the island. Thank you for hearing and listening to me. Thank you. I I'm sorry to hear your frustration. I appreciate um, very much. We, um, we appreciate that. Um, and so, um, Mr. Pustizi and Pustizi. then- Pustizi. My name is uh, Carl Pustizi. Thank you uh, for entertaining us tonight. Uh, my, my whole thing here is we definitely need help. Definitely need reform. Uh, my 2017 taxes were 11683 this year's taxes are 12409 with a plus of 726. I'm a disabled veteran. I'm a retired city worker. With my discount, I'm still paying 9200 and I earned it. I'm still paying more than the mayor, and he didn't earn it. My market value went up. My assessed value went up. The tax rate is 20 point, almost 4%. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's ridiculous. As of today, I just got a, a, a COLA, which is a cost of living allowance of $18 a month, which is only $216 a year. I couldn't, I couldn't ride the express bus round trip four times. There's only so much you could get out of the cow. There's only so much milk you could get from them udders, and them udders are gonna dry out. People are fleeing left and right. I'm looking to leave right now. I could go to Florida, pay no taxes, but my wife is here for the kids, and it's like I'm in a bind. So reform is definitely needed. Uh, the elderly too. You, you, I'm here for them too, my kids. The elderly, you, you got, they got to decide whether to pay taxes, buy food, or medication. This is ridiculous. It, 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 the mayor wants fair share with everything, fair share taxes. Thank you. And thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to hear now from uh, Chris Copa and Philip, Philip uh, Cord, and then we'll hear from Glenn Yost and Peter Boshra. So, uh, so Chris Copa and um, Philip Cord. Okay, a few, I have a few statements to say. First of all, I have a house that's worth about one-seventh the value of Bill de Blasio's, okay? And I pay approximately $200 less per year in real estate taxes than he does, which is really ridiculous. I'm sorry, your value is what? Is how my one value, seventh? The value of my house is about one-seventh. It's, it's because it needs so much work. It needs a total renovation, actually. It's worth maybe around somewhere under $250,000, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. um, my neighbor's house, which is right next to my, I did file an appeal for this uh, to get the market value challenged, okay? And they compared my house with my next door neighbors because that was the only comparable house in the neighborhood. Now my next door neighbor had a total renovation 
because the year before she bought it, the house got flooded and it ruined the whole house and somebody came in, a developer came in, paid around $85,000 to renovate the whole thing and then he sold it for just under 400,000. So, and they compared my house, they look at the two houses, well, gee, the mirror houses, they look exactly alike, but they're not. Uh, it's got a total renovation, hers is bigger on the inside, there's an old island kitchen, it's ridiculous how they come about this. And I try to compare and they say, well, uh, we're going to value this because this is the closest that we have. It's ridiculous. Second of all, I'm also a uh, disabled person, okay? I don't qualify for disability exemption because I'm not collecting Social Security yet, because I'm under 65. It's ridiculous. But yet, uh, according to New York City regulations and uh, training uh, on disability, I am considered disabled because I've had cancer a couple of times. And actually, I still have it, actually. So I think those rules need to be changed. They're not taking into account, the, I've been denied because I'm not collecting Social Security. And that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything that uh, Ms. Malayotakis said and, and uh, you know, people on the other side, it's really terrible what they're doing to us. And I can't afford to live there anymore. So I'm looking to move within just a couple of years. I have to figure out where to move to and move because I can't afford this anymore. And it's ridiculous. It's not fair that I pay $200 less than he does. And actually, I also think that someone who's renting out his house, because he's actually renting it, he's not even living there. I think you should have to live there to qualify for that. But he's, he's paying $3,500 a year in taxes, and he gets 6000 a month in rent on that tax, on that house. It's totally unfair. Okay, thank you for your um, testimony, and, and good luck to you in terms of your health, and we hope that you don't leave the city, okay? Thank you. Bye. Um, Mr. Um, is it Cord? No, Peter Bashra. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Mr. Cord. Okay, Mr. Cord. Can we'll, we'll flip over here no for problem. a minute, Mr. Cord. How's everybody doing? Uh, thank you for being here. Um, we, uh, we appreciate that. Uh, my name is Philip Cord. Um, I'm uh, I'm 29 years old. Uh, me and my wife are uh, public servants. We're both uh, we're high school teachers here. I actually teach right uh, right over there. Um, and uh, we uh, recently became owner homeowners last year. Um, we represent, um, I'm the co-founder of Port Richmond Strong. We're a community advocacy, advocacy group um, in Port Richmond, uh, Elm Park. And uh, my wife's social media manager, she couldn't be here. But um, uh, we wanted to come here because some part of our goals are to, uh, you know, obviously in the city we have a problem with uh, overdevelopment, with affordable housing, and, you know, um, I think a lot of people forget that uh, people that are in my age bracket, you know, I'm, me and my wife are very hardworking and we really worked hard to afford our house. Unfortunately, many, many, many of my peers that are my age, people in my age group, do cannot afford to own a home. They can't even afford to rent in the city. So, um, you know, I've seen many of my friends personally move, leave to New Jersey. And, uh, you know, if you look at the history of really any community, one of the most important things for the um, success of that community is home ownership. That's a marker of stability. And uh, the property tax, we feel that um, the, the property tax rates should reflect that by um, preferencing, uh, preferencing people that live in the community, people that are New York City residents that have lived here for their entire lives and want to be here. You know, many people want to move here because of the culture. If everybody leaves and goes to Florida, goes to Jersey, there's going to be no more New York culture. It just won't exist because we won't be here. Um, so uh, we feel as a group that um, whatever the tax uh, commission does, it should uh, include some sort of uh, incentives or benefits for people that have been lifelong New Yorkers and for people that are, you know, um, groups that uh, have trouble affording homes. For example, senior citizens 
or our millennials, as it's been called, uh, young people, uh, veterans, uh, people with disabilities that have, you know, they've been here, they've spent their money here, they've decided to stay here, and they've invested, they have an investment in this community. Um, one of our other goals is to uh, fight against predatory development in our neighborhood. Um, one of the things that is negative, uh, that can be negative for the community is absentee landlords and uh, people that look at communities like uh, Port Richmond as just, you know, an investment area where we can buy a bunch of properties and just make some money and, and leave. So um, as somebody else had mentioned, uh, we do think that the whatever is decided with tax reform should also preference people that are residents in their home because those are really people that are going to contribute to the community. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just ask you, um, so the, the organization is Port Richmond Strong, and yes. is that a homeowners, or is it a, a um, We're a nonpartisan organization that represents, it's, we have all different types of people. Many of us are young homeowners that uh, move, you know, honestly, the North Shore is seeing a lot of young homeowners because a lot of other areas of the city are just completely unaffordable. And that's one of the last places for affordable housing. But we do represent um, all, all community members. Um, we have veterans in our group. We have police officers, all kinds of uh, civil service workers that work with us. We've actually collected over 2,000 signatures in support of our group and in support of fighting against predatory development and working towards really revitalizing our communities um, from within. So, Thank you. Um, and, and thank you for being a teacher, which um, we, we so need good teachers. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yep. Thank um, you. All right. Back to you, Mr. Boshra. How are you? Well, uh, I didn't have anything prepared, so I'll speak what's on my mind. Uh, well, basically, uh, I have the same common issue like the gentleman with the assessment. Uh, I bought my house in 2012, and I'm not going to speak in, in, when it comes to like percentages, but I know... I, with my military discount as a veteran and my Star, my star Alliance uh, or a Star uh, discount, it was 3300 This year it went almost 4900 gradually. I called in and I said, this is not fair. My, I'm not getting any service. The, the street that I'm living on for the past six years has never been paved. Every time when we have snow and they plow it, it cracks all the, 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 uh, the asphalt and what they do in just patching, and the traffic at night, people were you know, like flying on Travis Avenue, and uh, you know, my house shakes because of the uneven uh, pavement. I called a lot of times the DOT, I called the Department of Finance because of my tax are so high and I'm not getting enough service. I was told that if they do the assessment, and my, my tax will get raised much higher. They have to take it with the DOT. I called DOT multiple times, Nobody cared, and uh, I even have issues right now with the house because of that vibration. I have cracks in my ceiling, and if I have to go through my insurance, I'm the one who's losing. I have to pay for the deduction. If I had to st fix it myself, I still have to pay out of pocket. So I'm, I'm like lose-lose situation. I'm sorry. Thank you for your testimony, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Sheila. See, we have um, Glenn Yost, and then we will hear from Irene Stein, Joan Thompson, and Edward Joby. Mr. Yost. Well, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to firstly thank a woman who started this, uh, by the way. Her name is Assemblywoman Nicole Meliotakis. I think you should applaud for her. Uh, it was at her bequest to the mayor that you all are sitting before us, and of course, that we have our friend, uh, my colleague, uh, Alan Capelli, who is a terrific attorney on Staten Island, you should all know, and who will take our voices forward uh, for sure to the mayor. So thank you all. Um, I think you all have heard uh, the basic issues. They are the inequity in our system. So uh, I think, you know, when we talk in terms of this particular property tax, which is known as the ad valorem tax, which ultimately in Latin, we know Alan from law school means of the value. So if we took that value uh, and perhaps things like Mr. Siciliano, who I know, I went to his, uh, his center there, his, his, his uh, town in Rossville, and we talked about just this. But to have that uh, just true market value and then have a percentage of tax rate that would be the same throughout the city of New York, I think that would make people feel comfortable 
and I'm glad you're all writing my thoughts down. I appreciate that. So, and the other thing that we really need to address, and I hope you all bring back to the mayor, is that when we talk about, and I think Mr. Cicliano again brought this up, that when he has an issue and someone comes out and assesses it, I think it's beyond the assessment, it's that the mayor continues to raise taxes through this tax levy continuously every single year. Now, we all have to live on a budget, right folks? You are our middle class here in Staten Island. Most people have two uh, incomes to make ends meet to begin with. So we know what it's like to live on a budget. The mayor doesn't do that. And I understand, we all understand that taxes provide services for our community and our, civil, our, our society. We know that. But it's the inequity that makes people feel frustrated and you feel their frustration tonight. I commend my fellow Staten Islanders for not being too rude and I know you're frustrated and I think this commission is hearing your pain. But the mayor has to live within a budget just as we do. And so when you think about when the city council raises the tax levy, 5%, 6%, 8%, in fact, it's as Nicole Meliotak has pointed out, it's been something like 44% in the last five years. Those are the numbers that are driving people out of town. And so there are things that could be done from Albany. There are things that could be done right here in the city council, whereby the mayor has to have a cap on that levy. It should be no more than 2%. And I'm gonna tell it right out loud, Mr. Mayor, you have to live within a budget, just like we do here in Staten Island. Thank you all, thanks. Thank you. Um, so next we're, we'll hear from Irene Stein, uh, Joan Thompson, and I'm sorry, are, are you Mr. Jody? Jody? Josie, yes. Josie, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't it's okay. read the, yeah, Mr. Josie, go, go ahead, and if, is Ms. Stein here, Irene Stein? Maybe she stepped out, Joan Thompson? Ms. Thompson, so if you can come forward, and then uh, Sarah Anderson. Mr. Josie. Thank you. Okay, good evening. My name is Edward Josie. I'm the president of Staten Island Branch of NAACP since 1997. And I thank you for this opportunity to address the uh, commission. Um, the NACP, I will speak from their perspective as well as my own perspective. Now, um, we are talking about the inequity in the tax structure. Now, the NACP New York State Conference is a nonprofit problematic component of the National Association of Advancement of Colored People, and for 109 years we have fought for people's rights. As part of the mission to build a society in which all individuals have equal rights, the NACP has often been at the forefront of the ensuring fair housing without regard to race. With an enactment of the Fair Housing Act in 1968, Congress declared a goal of eradicating racial discrimination in housing and recognized recognize that the courts have a virtual role in achieving that end. The evils that Congress targeted five decades ago are all too present today and too apparent in New York City. The city arbitrarily and redress that tax system undermined the Fair Housing Act promised by imposing unequal burden on the struggling minorities, residents restricting the supply and affordable housing that minorities need to need the most. The reinforcement stark resident segregations. This is not just a political problem, it is a civil rights legal issue that NACP is committed to fixing. The New York City discriminatory property tax system places an unlawful and unequal burden of hundreds of millions of dollars on minority residents and perpetuates some of the worst residential segregations in the nation. The curiosity view of the data shows that the property tax systems disproportionately disadvantage black residents homeowners and districts within New York City that are at least three-fifths black. For example, pay effectiveness tax rates that are roughly 20% higher than the districts that are at least three-fifths white. And apparent tenants who are disproportionately 
likely to be black, bear much of this burden on the effectiveness, disparities likely to be black, bear the burden of the effectiveness of tax rates several times higher than those of the con condominiums and corporate more likely to be owned by white residents, which by laws should be treated equally for purposes of tax assessments. Perhaps most important, the property tax system does not just harm minority residents, it harms all of the city's residents by perpetuating some of the worst residential segregations in the entire United States. The effectiveness creates and depth deepens inequalities in education, sociological outcomes, and even public health, and, the, and prevents the growth of cross-racial understanding and the time when it's truly needed in our country's communities. On a personal note, I am the proud Staten Islander. Here in Staten Island, assessment rates or effective tax rates, taxes as a percent of market value are the highest in the city. While the racial problems with the tax are do documented, the data shows that Staten Islanders with lower incomes and property values are also negatively affected. I own a modest home. The city says it is worth $406,000. My taxes before my $300 uh, star tax exemption totaled almost $4,000 as effective tax rates of just under 1%. Meanwhile, the neighborhood with much more valuable homes, the effective tax rates were significantly lower. I urge the commission to take Gardens from the court about the best ways to address the several inequalities plaguing the system, address the significant burden on lower income homeowners with lower value homeowners and rented renters, much of whom are people of color and my fellow Staten Islanders. Thank you for this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Josie. I appreciate it. Um, is it Ms. Thompson? Yes. Ms. Thompson. Um, thank you for being here. Um, I just want to attest to the convoluted. Um, Oops, sorry. Thank you. I just want to attest to the convoluted means of calculating the uh, changes um, in taxes upward. Nobody can really understand them. Maybe you do. The majority of us don't. Um, but I wanted to, to say um, that as far as seniors are concerned, um, I would hope that when they have a slight change in their income um, on one year, it might be possible to average that increase out for maybe five years so that they don't lose the benefit of their enhanced star program or other program that they might be um, on prior to their increase. Mm -hmm. uh, for, exa for example, I was recently wil widowed and I had some small amounts of money that I didn't have before um, and I lost every, every benefit and my taxes as usual have increased. They've never gone down, ever. But um, now they've increased even more. So, um, and I don't qualify because of that one time that I got a death benefit payment. So if they could be averaged out, it would help the seniors. And not to be snarky, if they want to save money, um, stop, stop using so much paint to draw bicycles on the ground when <laughs> bicyclists don't, don't put any money in the city coffers. I, I didn't mean to be snarky. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Thompson. I had not heard about that issue with unusual increases in income and appreciate that. Um, Ms. Anderson. Is that you? Hi, uh, good evening. Um, 
First of all, um, thank you for being here. I, I'm not prepared. I kind of found out about this hearing at the last minute, but I was very excited when I did because um, I have been struggling myself to try to figure out the whole system um, and why I'm paying so much tax, um, one, compared to people in my neighborhood and also um, as a Staten Islander. Um, I think in listening to what everybody said today, I kind of heard some of the issues that I had brought up. Mm -hmm. um, the one I guess I'll just talk briefly about is um, basically um, I work most of my life. Um, I had some personal issues, um, had some mental health issues, I had a divorce. My family was uh, affected by substance abuse, which a lot of uh, Staten Island, I think, as a whole, uh, Staten Island, as I've seen the statistics, is, um, was hit very hard with substance abuse. So families are struggling. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I lost my job. My son has a disability. Uh, I went from two incomes to one income, and I struggled a lot. Um, I'm not a veteran. I'm not a senior. Um, I don't receive SSI for my disability, so there were no benefits. Um, As I was struggling to try to keep things together with everything that was going on, um, I I didn't uh, I didn't I don't I don't qualify anymore for the star benefit. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but all I know is that uh, I missed the deadline to continue the star benefit. Um, I wound up having to borrow a lot of money to pay some back taxes after my divorce, and I thought that I was going to start getting better. And I guess what what I'm trying to focus on is that it just seems like things just keep coming. It's like uh, I was told after I managed to pay off the uh, taxes I owed that uh, there were a lot of penalties for late, late payments and things like that, and I had missed a lot of deadlines. Um, I wasn't functioning very well. I'm doing a lot better now. I actually just got a job, so I'm going to start working. My son is in third grade. Uh, he's getting better as well. Um, Things are getting better. But I, I went through a really hard time, and I really didn't know who to turn to. Um, I also know that there's a, an emphasis on uh, assistance with people with mental health issues. Sometimes people don't meet the qualifications that allow them to qualify to be disabled, but they're struggling with issues. They're struggling with uh, issues at home and with families, and they need some help. And uh, I just, I'm glad that this panel came, and I just felt like I need to say something. Um, I pay a lot more money in taxes than my neighbors do. I'm not sure exactly why. I'm still trying to figure out the different classifications. I do know that at one point, I was uh, trying to figure out how to make money by renting out part of my home. And I, and I wanted to do it legally, so I didn't have any problems, but my, my neighborhood is not, my area is not zoned for two family homes. So even if I wanted to, I wouldn't have been able to do it legally, and I just didn't want, you know, I wanted to do things by the book. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate everybody coming, I appreciate the panel. I just think it would be, it's good to um, allow people to be here. As somebody said, this, you know, I kind of found out at the last minute, and the only reason I'm here is because I'm not working yet. <laughs> But if I was, I know that I would be running home trying to get my family together before I was able to get here. So it is really important to get, to allow people to have the time to talk. And I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Anderson. And good luck to you in the new job. And, and ma'am, I'll just say hardship issues are on our radar. We're aware of hardship issues. There's some talk going on about it. Can't promise anything, but it is something that's part of what we're talking about. And Ms. Anderson, I did announce earlier. I'm, uh, there is folks. There are folks from DOF that you can ask about the next. star. Thank Terrific. you. Terrific. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Thank you. Um, is Ms. Stein, Irene Stein, here? No. Okay. Um, so we're going to go to uh, Kelly um, Bavarian, uh, Arlene Bogard, Gail um, Morozek, and. Um, Vito Canina. Um, Ms. Bavarin? 
Kelly. Just, Kelly. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to say a couple things. Um, so to the council people, oh, thank you. To the council members, um, every year you raise us. This Last year it was 19.991%. This year my taxes went up to 20.385%. So that's a total increase of 3.94%. One second. I guess that's not the way out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ap apologies, Kelly. That's all right. <laughs> So the council people, the council members are the ones who vote for the increases. Every year you vote for it, every year you get it, every year I gotta pay it. So I don't think that's fair, because on the same end, the tax assessment rate is always 6% too. I get raised on that too. So I think that's double dipping. You can't, you're taxing me from both ends. Um, so I don't think that's fair, th that you can tax twice on the same property. Um, so I have here, I printed them off online from the Department of Finance website. Every year I do the appeal. Um, and I try to, you know, get my taxes lowered, but it never works. I always get denied, but I don't even get told why. Like, I would like to know why. Debbie Rose is right. The appeal process is a sham. No one ever gets back to you. No one tells you what the story is. At least if I understand it, I'll stop sending you my emails. <laughs> um, so every year I used to do it, every year I did it based upon my own neighborhood. I took five houses, I, you know, uh, off of whatever, a different uh, real estate agencies. I looked up their tax rates. Uh, my market value is, you know, always in line with them. Same type of house. I picked the same, same um, lot, like the same lot size, same square footage, same building size. It didn't matter because my assessed value is always higher. Um, so this year, I did it by, I took one house in each borough, all right? And I have them right here. And yes, de Blasio's house is on there. Um, so my set, I have a regular little cape. No swimming pool, no garage, a little cape. Um, you guys say my market va my assessed value is 28,656, okay? De Blasio, and my market value is 528. De Blasio is two million sixty-seven, uh, and his assessed value is eighteen thousand dollars. I'm paying fifty-eight hundred dollars in tax, and you and he's paying thirty-eight. Like, uh, 30, I'm sorry, thirty-five. Like, how is that fair? And I took every, I took a house in every borough, the Bronx, comparable to my market value. I, be, you know, except for De Blasio because that was just funny. Um, so I got Queens, I got the Bronx, I got Manhattan. I could, I could live cheaper in Manhattan, guys. Who, who would have guessed that? Oh my God, Manhattan, let's look up Manhattan. So Manhattan is, um, their market value is 478, so it's kind of close to mine. Their assessed value is only $20,000, and their actual yearly tax is $3,500. That's insane. So here are all your papers, and it's right on your own website. Um, you can print them all out. Um, I have it all right here, because there you've got to answer that. That that's ridiculous. How do you determine the assessed value? And every year I fight it and say you cannot keep raising me. And every year you do. Every year I lose. And maybe you're right. Maybe they're coming to my house and I'm at home and they're just saying, uh oh, she keeps complaining. I'm gonna stick it to her. But I feel bad for you because you're even getting it worse than me. You don't even get city services. And I'm happy to pay my fair share. Yes, I want the firemen to come if I got a fire. Yeah, I want, you know, I want my garbage picked up. But I would love to see Nicole's ratio of that. We want to pay our fair share. But if we're paying the most, we are getting the least amount of services. Two years ago, they got all these ferries. Thank you. Two years ago, de Blasio put all these ferries in to go from Brooklyn to Queens and Brooklyn to Manhattan. We have one friggin' ferry. We're the only borough without a free exit off, the, a free entrance onto the island. Every, you got two bridges in Brooklyn. You got, a, you got a bridge and a tunnel in Queens. We gotta pay every time we come home. You know, that's not fair. Give us a South Shore Ferry, but no, no, not that. At least if, if my taxes went to at least South Shore Ferry, so all our other neighbors could be here by six o'clock because of the new MTA bus lines and UN traffic, no one's getting back to Staten Island until eight o'clock. 
So if you give us a South Shore Ferry, then at least I could say, all right, at least my taxes is going towards something. But it's not. It's going to someone's pocket because, you know, I, I, I don't understand it. I'm sorry, one Thanks. more thing and I'll stop. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really trying to be restrained. Uh, so, um, and yeah, so mm -hmm. on your, your envy, your, um, your notice of property value, right? I have done every calculation to man. I have Googled it every, and I just found out tonight that one of the totals you guys use, the um, effective market total, is a t statistical total. We, can e we will never know that value. Like, that's not fair either. Like, I can't get to certain calculations because I will never know how you determine this, 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 uh, um, 477, this effective market value. There is no way, and that's not fair. That's, that's like you're, you're lying to us. It's like you're hiding information from us. It's not right. Thank you very much, Kelly. I appreciate it. Um, Ms. Bogard? Ms. Morozik. Thank you. All righty. I don't think I can improve on that. She did very well. Uh, okay, my name is Gail Morozik, and I'm a native Staten Islander, born and raised. And my husband and I have been married 36 years, and we had a condo for 17 years. And the last 15 years, we live in a nice, modest ranch in Dongan Hills on a 50 by 100 property. Um, when we purchased our home in 2003, the real estate taxes are approximately $2,500, give or take. Now they're over 5,000. As I understand it, the fiscal year is from June to July, and the taxes always went up once a year, and thereby increasing our escrow payment and raising our mortgage payment. But this year, for the first time ever, it went up twice in three months. And I didn't know if I was the only one affected. So I reached out to um, Assemblywoman Assemblywoman Malia Takas' office through Dawn Clarity, and we addressed it. And she got the same answer I did, which was uh, basically the assessed value of the home went up, so the taxes went up. Now, here's an example. Okay, what I want to know is who's regulating how these taxes are determined. Because one month my home was valued at 449000 okay? But then three months later, it was valued at 550000 So the city adjusted the taxes, and they said in June, your, your taxes are going to go up to X amount of dollars, and you could pay the escrow uh, shortage payment. You could make that through the mortgage, because they do the escrow analysis, which every year my husband and I faithfully pay that shortage. Now there's another shortage, because we raised you up, we're going to make you pay, we pay bi-monthly. So instead of paying the full, now 1210 a month, mm -hmm. we pay like five, 609 But in, in, let's see, three months in, it was 595 <laughs> Then three months later, they reassessed the value at 550 and lo and behold, the city went back and says, oh, no, wait, you owe us more money. And I said, but I just paid you the shortage. I just... I, I even offered to pay more escrow, which I heard is illegal. You can't hold more than $50 in excess in your escrow, and they give you the money back, which I thought odd. If I, I gave them a check for $195, and I said, please put this in my escrow so I don't have to do this every year. I'll just pay a shortage and not, so I have surplus. They said one woman at the office, and I'm sorry I don't have her name handy, she told me, yes, I could do that at the mortgage company. Mm -hmm. And when I went back again and spoke to a different person, they told me the exact opposite. No, you can't do that. That's why you got the check back. And I said, it took you three months to figure that out? So what I don't understand is the fixed rate mortgage premise is like a false statement. While the interest rate stays the same for 15 or 30 years, the constant tax increases make us feel like it's a losing battle. And who's regulating how these taxes are determined? Is there a system of checks and balances that you guys can impose? Uh, now, Mr. Capi Capielli, Capelli. sorry, Capelli? Capitelli, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, that you can try to help the commission to keep abreast of this 
So this doesn't keep happening, because this is the first time in, in 15 years, and even before at the condo, that we got assessed twice in one year, and I don't understand. Like, isn't there only one fiscal year? One time the taxes should go up on a private home? Yeah, it should. And um, see, at first I blamed the mortgage company because they had changed their lender. But then they, they keep throwing it back to the city. And as the young lady before me said and several others have said, we don't want to leave Staten Island. I like my house. I love my neighborhood. I, don't, I made the house. My husband and I made it a home. And we don't want to leave. But as Governor Cuomo erroneously stated, oh, New Yorkers are leaving because of the weather? We're not leaving because of the weather. <laughs> we're, we're actually leaving because we, can't ha we don't retain the financial resources to stay here. As people get older and we look to retire, we want to keep our resources so we can live comfortably and not keep paying our taxes. I, you know, my husband and I are fortunate. We're paying on principal right now. My husband looks at the bill every year. I do all the financials. He makes the money, God bless him, and he brings it to me and gives me the bills, and I'm fine. When he saw the last mortgage escrow analysis, why are we still paying, have an $81,000 outstanding mortgage when in 15 years this is supposed to be paid off? He said, it, and I keep telling him that taxes are going up. It's not the fixed rate, quote unquote. So I am looking for you guys to please find a solution to this sooner than later. And if there's anything we as citizens and homeowners can do to that end, I'd be glad to help. Thank you. You know, just tell us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time. Is it Ms. Bogart? Yes. Hi. Um, all homeowners agree that our property taxes are going up at a steady higher rate in New York City, but our incomes are not. The services received that the services that we receive don't measure up to the money the taxes that we pay. For example, my property taxes in Annadale is nine thousand nine hundred and fifty eight dollars for my eighty by a hundred lot. I have a large footprint in New York City because of my lot size, yet I have to use my footprints to walk a mile to access the express bus or the railroad to get to work in Manhattan every day. Um, I don't see the correlation for my property taxes paid and the transportation services provided by the city to my area. Let's talk about the tale of two cities. Starting in 2018, disabled New Yorkers no longer receive a tax reduction of their combined income if it's over $58,399 under the tax relief program, which ended last year. That means my taxes went up. $4,400 in one year. Because my husband, who is a disabled New Yorker from 9-11 rescue worker, his now combined income, his income plus my income, is over $58,000, so he no longer qualifies for that. So in one time, $4,400 I had to pay. So talk about a mortgage shortage. They said, would you like to pay it in full, $4,400? I said, absolutely not, um, because I have children to feed, right? So. That means that a lot of New Yorkers, such as our firefighters and police officers that are getting three quarters pay, you know, pension because they were disabled while working for the city and helping the city, um, they no longer receive that benefit because of this. Um, who can afford to own a home in New York City with an income of $58,000 a year? That's, that's uh, absurd. So you're setting up a program which no one can benefit for. Maybe three people in New York City? So, um, Dis um, disabled homeowners put money into the city's economy with repairs and perhaps they have tenants. Disabled New Yorkers' incomes are usually fixed. So if somebody is disabled and they're receiving a disabled um, pension or workers' comp or Social Security, that income is fixed. It doesn't go up at the same rate as the taxes go up. So those disabled New Yorkers, they're out of here as, long as these um, property taxes continue to go up. Yet, for working New Yorkers who are actually in homeless shelters, they have um, a special um, housing voucher called SOTA, which is a city special one-time assistance program. They don't have an income cap. And those are the people who are draining from the city because we're paying to provide them with shelter services. So they're draining for the city. However, the disabled New Yorkers are actually contributing to the city because, again, they're paying their property taxes and they're paying for the into the economy because they're making the uh, repairs. Um, so in comparing New York City programs and the criteria, why does new disabled New Yorkers 
um, have an income cap, yet housing subsidies do not, and they're in the same city. So this is an example of a tale of two cities. So let's remove the income cap for disabled New Yorkers who own homes in New York City. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I have Vito uh, Kohina, Konina, uh, Christopher Altieri, Bill uh, Wyan, and um, uh, Bobby Elisa, and Patrick Glenn. Those are the folks next up. Uh, is it Mr. Konina? Yeah, Konina. Konina. Thank you. Um, I don't know where to begin. Um, pretty much Staten Island was a place where everybody selected because of affordability, but I think the rates, I think we're the highest out of the five boroughs in terms of how high in a few years the taxes, the property taxes have gone. Um, and it's a shame because we're all regular people. We're just trying to make a living. Um, Felix, uh, my friend, uh, he's, he, he drives Accessoride. You know, we're not rich people, so it's like, you know, just the way that the taxes have been going, it's, it's really, it's a shame because Staten Island is becoming for the rich now. It's just, if you're a regular person, you don't matter pretty much what I'm seeing. Um, and it's a shame because if, if you do everything by the book, you pay the price, you pay the tax. And, um, you know, any bit of a decrease would help Staten Islanders. Um, and it's not just residential uh, homeowners that are, you know, that are feeling the effects. It's also commercial landlords. Um, I've spoken to many, and their taxes have just, you know, been outrageous the last few years. Um, and, um, you know, I speak about my grandmother, who is barely could walk, a uh, widower, um, you know, and basically helpless, but, you know, the taxes keep on going up. So, you know, we just want a chance. You know, we, we want to see, I don't know, what the solution is going to be. I mean, I, I know this is not like a lease where you could have, uh, like on a lease, sometimes a landlord might say, you know, I'll keep the rent the same for two years. I can't see that happen in Staten Island where they're going to skip a year. But, you know, any bit of decrease would help. Um, you know, we're all hardworking people from all walks of life. Who's born here? Who's an immigrant? But, you know, you're all here for the same common dream. So. Um, you know, we just want to see, you know, we're all here because we want to see, we want to make a difference and, uh, we just want to be heard and, uh, we hope something positive comes out. Thank you. And your, your grandmother, you can talk to the <clears throat> folks outside about Scree, if she's not on Scree, if she's a homeowner. Okay, yeah. So, the, the, for the senior sure, sure. discount? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's crazy. Like, a lot of the examples that were brought up, I mean, I know a lot of people moved to Florida, family, friends. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it's getting really, people are starting to feel it because right. it's really getting pretty high. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Altiera? No? Oh, did I start? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> right here. How about if we, oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, okay, what we need as far as equity, uh, we need to um, uh, reset the assessed values at the time of sale, mm -hmm. and we need a 2% New York City property tax cap. The entire state of New York has it. New York City needs it. Um, city of New York has well over $10 billion in uh, reserve funds. We have, we've been enjoying multi-billion dollar budget surpluses year after year after year after year. You're collecting too much money in real estate taxes. <clears throat> um, the reason why your tax bills are going up every year is because the total assessed value of the city keeps going up every year, and the city council and the mayor are keeping the rate the same. They're keeping the overall rate the same which means that's a $2 billion budget, a $2 billion increase in real estate taxes every year. And that gets divided amongst the class shares. That's why your property tax bills are going up between 8 and 10% a year. That has to end. The best disinfectant is sunlight. The city council is raising our property taxes every year 
by keeping the overall rate the same. The media has to report it that way. Okay, is, is the advance here? Anybody from the media here? The headline, the next budget, the headline when the city council sets the next budget should be if they keep the overall rate the same, the city council raised your property taxes $2 billion. That's what the headline should say. That's what they should have been say, saying for the last two decades. Okay, so that's, if you guys report to the city council, if you report to the mayor, that has to end. The farce has to be over and done with. It's been a farce, okay? okay. Over, I have it at $14 billion in, 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 in reserve funds. Okay, the mayor, the last budget, because the city council wanted to put more money into reserve funds, finally admitted, according to him, $10 billion in reserve funds. I have it at 14. We're swimming in dough. Stop raising our property tax bills. It has to end now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Uh, is it Wyan or? Bill Ween. Mr. Ween. Hi, my name is Bill Ween. Uh, thank you for being here. I didn't plan on speaking. I came to uh, just listen and take notes. But uh, I did have some questions, and I, I agree with everybody here about the disparities and, and, and you know, this whole tax, property tax system is a farce. It's, you know, you can't figure it out. Even when you go to the, the Finance Bureau, they can't figure it out. You know, nobody can give you a straight answer. Uh, it's, I just can't believe why it's been, how it's been going on for so many years and it's still, you know, not, not, uh, not been addressed. Uh, which actually leads me to my, uh, my question is, uh, when is, your commission, when is your review expected to be completed and presented to the mayor, one, and two, when is the mayor expected to uh, uh, review and uh, implement your proposed recommendations? So let me um, take, an, uh, t take a pass at that and then my, my co-chair or any member of the commission can also um, jump in. Um, we are supposed to deliver preliminary recommendations sometime in the early or late winter, January, February. We'll then have another round of hearings. We'll be back here um, at a different time. Oh, we hear you. Um, for people to give, uh, you know, feedback and comments, and then we will issue final recommendations sometime in the early summer is our goal, right? So, so, so then I want to answer your second question, which well, is... I'm sorry, I just want to understand my first question. You're going uh -huh. to, you, you plan, I understand this is all, mm -hmm. but the plan is to uh, present to the mayor in the summer of 19 your proposed to recommendation? Present, so um, we will present the preliminary recommendations, hopefully in January or February. To the mayor? Well, to the mayor, to the governor, um, as you know, to you. and to you, um, as you know, the, the property tax system, as you say, is incredibly complex. Some of it is regulated by the state law, state statutes that would have to be changed by the Assembly, the Senate, and the Governor. Some things can be changed by the City Council and the Mayor. So the, those recommendations would go to the City Council and the Mayor. Other recommendations would go to the State Assembly, the State Senate, and to the Governor, um, and both will be required. So I would just add that our preliminary, after our preliminary recommendations are out, we're coming back, mm -hmm. Staten Island to all the five boroughs to hear what people think about it. <laughs> so, so that's part of the process. So, so when, when, when are the folks in Staten Island going to see uh, a possible relief in the property taxes that we're paying? Not until, what, 2020? So I'm just trying to get, I know, you, yeah, I, I'm not going to nail you to a date here. I'm just trying to get a, 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 a guess of it. Unfortunately, I, you know, I, I can't promise you that when we issue recommendations that the state assembly, senate, and governor will rush to put those into effect. But we will do everything we can, both to 
issue recommendations that drive towards a fairer, more transparent, and simpler system, and to work with both the mayor, the city council, the state senate, state assembly, and the governor to have reform as soon as possible. But yes, it will take a while. There is wow. no denying that. Well, I mean, I, I would just like to say, you know, you mentioned about the city council, you mentioned about the state assembly, the governor and everything, and this is where I look over and I, I see all those chairs are empty with our elected politicians and, you know, uh, I know Debbie Rose mentioned that her constituents is nothing left in their toolbox. Uh, well, we look to you, Debbie Rose, to be our hammer and our screwdriver at the city council to speak for the Staten Islanders. Uh, and, and, and the same goes for, uh, uh, you know, who was it, Donovan, talking about uh, Donovan's representative saying we're getting lip service. Uh, you know, you know what he's doing for us. And we are called the forgotten borough, and we look to our politicians to you know, make sure that we're not the forgotten borough, and we seem to, for years, have been the forgotten borough, uh, and you know, I think it's time we need change with the politicians, too. Uh, that's, that's all I got to say. Hey, Thank you. Let me, uh, one of the things about this process is we are going to issue a preliminary report. We're going to come back here. You're going to look at it. You're going to say you like it or you don't like it. Maybe you should fix this. Maybe you should do that. This includes you all in the process. Then, if you buy into it and you like it, you're going to have to help sell it to the politicians, the assembly, the Senate, uh, the various stakeholders. But at least you'll have a blueprint from a commission that was created to come up with a fairer and a more transparent system that people can understand. So that's our goal, is to, to arm you with the, two, have you have the ability to be able to understand things uh, simpler, uh, make recommendations, you can see what the effects are gonna be of those recommendations, and if you buy in, then we're gonna need you to sell, help us sell the, uh, the plan. Well, I don't think that anybody in this room or anybody in New York City, I mean, we all agree that the that the current system is broke and, and the disparities in how taxes are assessed on, on people's properties is, mm -hmm. is broke. So, uh, I, you know, I don't, as long as you're going to be fair as far as assessing everybody's property taxes, I don't think anybody in this room has a problem with paying their fair share. So, uh, as long as you guys come up with some type of proposal like that, I don't think you'll have a problem with us selling, you know, us buying into it. Well, we look forward to continuing the conversation. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So you um, is it Mr. Olisa? <laughs> Mr. Olisa? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to address the board. I actually intended to attend uh, to complain about how uh, my uncle, who could not be here tonight, he's 80 years old. He served in the military during uh, uh, peacetime. And by a matter of four months, he was not eligible to get the Veterans Affairs uh, discount. Uh, I realize now, after doing some more research, that that is a federal matter and nothing for you guys. But in sitting here and listening to everybody tonight, I, I noticed the recurring themes of the disparity in, in rates, which absolutely must be addressed. And one thing that, that's glaringly obvious in the disparity in rates is the disparity in representation. Mm. There are 12 of you up there, but one Staten Islander. That needs to be fixed first. We need a absolute representation on this commission. Okay? Um, I, I can echo the, the, the words of Representative Lanza. This, this is going to be a sham. I can see it now, this, this, this whole proceeding and everything. Granted, you people have worked hard, you've achieved greatness in your careers and placement, but this isn't going anywhere. It's not going to make a difference without proper representation for Staten Island on this commission. And by that, I mean we're paying as the numbers that 
that Nicole threw out, we're paying 200% more than Park Slope, okay? There should be 200% more Staten Island representation on this board. That's all I got. Good evening. Um, Is it Mr. Glenn? No, Elisa. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, your Bo name is? Bobby Digi Olisa. I see. Okay. I got you. I got, got me? mixed up. My apologies. No, it's Mr. fine. Olisa. It's fine. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, I have just ran for state assembly, um, came in second. Uh, one of the reasons I ran for office um, was because there are so many, and you know, I'm just echo uh, some of the things that folks said earlier, and I will try not to be long-winded. Um, there's so many issues in this city that we must uh, begin to take action on. Uh, you know, there's a long list of them. In terms of taxes, uh, about a year ago, I purchased a property. Um, used to live in Richmond Town. Uh, and I had a property that was about 7,500 square footage. Uh, the taxes was about $6,000. Um, and I moved to the North Shore prop proper, and the property I bought there, uh, much smaller. But when I closed, and I saw, rather after my closing, and I then received the tax assessment and bill, it was mind-blowing. So what I did was I went to the uh, office in St. Mark's, and you know, not to put anyone out there, but it was just as confusing for them to explain to me, you know, uh, because it's complicated. If it's complicated um, for you all, imagine those who are representing the city in a local level, right? So that's an issue there. Um, it made no sense, and I'm a small business owner, so, you know, dollars and cents, we we're able to figure these things out. I still can't. Um, so, and then in trying to come to some resolution, the process it itself, the paperwork, for instance, the follow-up, that's tedious. We have to begin to streamline, uh, you know, um, uh, processes with the government for regular people, especially regular, um, um, struggling middle-class people, so that they're not using all of their uh, time after work uh, pursuing, uh, um, you know, clarity with these processes. So that's, if we can streamline and make things much more paperwork, uh, less paperwork and a faster respond rate, that would be great. Those are small, you know, uh, small fixes. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the way we're being assessed on Staten Island, I'm sure you've heard it all. Uh, but I, I want to beg of you to seriously consider what you're hearing tonight. Unfortunately, this is in the packed room because a, the location, the time, transportation, et cetera. Uh, and being a community activist and an advocate, there are many people that I know, civic leaders who wanted to be here but could not be here tonight. So they'll be sending in emails uh, of statements and their perspective. Um, the tax is too damn high in the city, too damn high. Uh, people are, we're having increased homelessness uh, issue um, and it's also tied to uh, taxes in homes, people not being able to hold on to their homes because the tax, I know a family that uh, their tax um, bills escape them and the tax, the taxes, the property tax, the property winded up, the taxes winded up being sold to uh, investors and so on and so forth and the home was taken from under them. And this family is still homeless till today. Uh, the father's dealing with mental health issues now um, because, of course, he feels uh, like a failure. Um, they're going from shelter to shelter. Uh, matter of fact, one of them, uh, one of the family members is uh, staying in a park. Okay, these are real stories. And it all ties back to an issue uh, like taxes, you know, uh, not being able to keep up with the taxes. And if we look at what we're getting for what we're paying, speaking about Staten Island and speaking about the North Shore, uh, we are underserved in terms of services that the city and state um, 
are responsible for. So it's hardworking people. These aren't people looking for handout we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about people, homeowners, who, uh, as the lady earlier mentioned, trying to rent to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. um, so I know government is slow to resolving issues, but if this could be done in stages where there are short-term fixes and long-term fix, then we know that we're actually uh, relieving people before people lose their homes or before five, six, seven years pass and the taxes have already increased. So now whatever discount or whatever we're getting, we're paying a new, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so if we can, if we can just be proactive um, and if you all could vocalize that when you make your reports and if we can shrink the timeline for getting results and the outcomes, that would be fantastic. And I commend the work that you all are doing because you are taking time and probably not paid to be here uh, to listen to all of us vent and ramble. But these are serious uh, and, and real stories, right? Absolutely. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please do remind your neighbors, other you know, civic organizers and leaders that they can file their comments online, OK? And and yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Capelli reminds me, we have a website, it's the, if you go on the New York City Gov site and you put in Advisory Commission on Tax Reform, we have all, you know, documents collected there and you can submit your comments through that, through that mechanism, okay? Um, yes, it's, if you go on uh, the NewYorkCity.gov website and you put in Advisory Commission on Tax Reform, it will take you to the page, okay? Um, I have the last slip is um, um, Mark uh, Piscopo. Is there anyone else who didn't fill out a slip but who wants to speak? Okay. Mr. Hello. Piscopo. Mm -hmm. um, when I uh, bought my house in uh, 2002, the property taxes were $1,923 for a year. My property taxes last year were $9,044. This year, it's $9,607. I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> I mean, I didn't strike oil in my backyard. I mean, is this going to slow down? Is this going to price me out? I mean, I know a couple of nice houses moved, were built in my neighborhood, but I'm getting reassessed every year. And it's, it's becoming to the point where you have to start saving, putting money aside for your property tax bill. Like you can't just, you know, you got to put extra. You talk about like the escrow accounts. You keep getting notified for the mortgage company that your, your, your mortgage payment's not enough now because everything's moving up. Mm -hmm. If there's something you can do, please. Because uh, it's, it's getting a little scary now. I mean, $9,600. When you first, when you buy the house, it's 1900. You're thinking, oh, I didn't have to move out to Long Island. I could stay in the city and pay less taxes. And then when I retired from the police department in 2010, my taxes were 5,500. I was like, okay, I mean, it moved up, but I could afford that. But since then it's moved up $4,000 since 2010. I mean, please see if you could do something. I mean, I should be paying that much more than the Blasio. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I think uh, I speak for all of us here that we very much appreciate your coming out. We know how valuable your time is and, and the sacrifices that you made to be here. We appreciate hearing from you. Uh, it's extremely helpful to us to hear the specifics, to hear the nuances of what's going on, um, for us to be able to think through uh, what's necessary to be done and, and what recommendations should be made uh, for reform. So we will be back. Um, you can communicate with us in the meantime by you know, submitting any further thoughts that you have, but we will be back in the, er in the early in the year uh, to get your feedback on the preliminary recommendations. And again, um, thank you very much. Mr. Capella.
Yeah, that was it. Not bad.